and welcome to another First Class Cricket Academy podcast. In this episode, we will be giving our thoughts on what has been a very good tour for India, but not so good for England. As usual, I am joined by Raj, head of First Class Cricket, and also Darren, who is a coach at First Class Cricket. How are you doing, guys? Very well. Thank you very much. How are you, Raj, after that? I'm sure I'm better off than you two at the moment. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. (laughs) After that, Raj, I think... I think, you know, after you guys winning 8-4 in total, it's, it's out of all the test matches in the T20 series. Actually, Raj, coming on to the T20 series, watching that last game that we saw that we saw today, what that was quite a game, wasn't it? Today's game, fantastic game, yeah. Um, India fielded really badly and got, uh, you know, England back into the game. But, um, yeah, it was really close. And... Um, uh, so many catches drop, obviously, it's going to uh, get close. You know, at one point, the game was nailed on, but India just let uh, their guard down and uh, uh, let England sneak in. Mm. Darren, do you think um, England had a good chance there, or do you think it was it was lost when, when to be fair, they, I think they put, a lot of, they put a lot on Roy, don't they, and Bairstow to try and get them off to a fly. So I think today was a real test for that middle order, wasn't it? Yeah, and... Uh... To be honest, the middle order really haven't fired that much over all three games. Mm. And obviously, um, Curran's done very well today. But as Rice said, he was assisted by some comical fielding towards the end there. <laughs> but fair play to him. If if they're not going to catch it, that's not his problem, is it? No. But yeah, it's um, that that's the diff- I think you see the difference today when India have got guys coming in six and seven, adding important runs. Pandya, Richard Pant although I think he batted a bit higher today. But England are, as you say, very reliant on Roy and Bear, so getting them off to a flyer. And and uh, Ben Stokes, as he did in the second game, getting a big score in a hurry as well. Mm. Darren, do you think it's good to be reliant on your two, one of your two big starters or not? Or do you think it's good to try and... It's, it's never. It, I don't think it's ever good to be reliant on mm. a big player. I mean, India have got a big score today and Kohli's not not contributed at all is he so um no you you need you need a top six maybe seven who can all score big which i'm not sure we've got at the moment we've got guys who can score 30 40 quick batting at six or seven we've got butler who's not really in hasn't got any 50 over runs really since the world cup but um you know and but but still it's it i do believe they are by far the two best white ball teams on the planet Mm. and I would be surprised if they're not if they're not in the final of the World Twenty Twenty at the end of the year. Raj, would you say that's where India are stronger with that middle order? They, if they collapse, they have that middle order to get them to, to revive them. Basically, do you reckon that's where they're stronger than England? No, I think uh, it has always been the way India plays, and it was really funny to see that the English media go, uh, telling the Indian players how to play. The Indian players are not going to listen to the English media. We are going to play. We lost the second game, not because the batsmen played slowly. We lost the second game because the two spinners bowled absolute, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. they went for about 160 odd. Now, you can't have your two main spinners going like that. And that's where we lost the game. We didn't lose the game for batsmen. So, this is absolute you know, nonsense, the British media telling Indian players how they, or what their strategy should be. And what happens is England's bowlers can put in or score 9, 10, 11 also, say uh, the way Mark Wood batted today. Okay. Mm-hmm. They can at least go and put in about 30 odd runs. In India, it doesn't happen. If you're paying people like Kuldeep Jadav, Chahal, uh, Bumra, and, uh, you know, whoever it is, India's main bowlers, they're not going to contribute 30 runs. Mm. So India cannot go and go all guns blazing in the first part. Do you then so think, in, do you think do you, Raj, do you think it's wrong that England do go? Do, does that need to stop? Although they won the World Cup from doing that, do you think they need to no, try no. and think of another way to go, get like, around it? They do it because this format, and they have been doing it because somehow they have got 
the vote going in their favor at the ICC and condition the game to suit themselves. Mm. So the, they have started doing like this since the two balls came in, the extra power plays came in. Okay, so now they know that maybe the ball will swing a bit and it's absolute flat roads. So they can go hard at the start and the ball is not going to spin because it's so hard. There's going to be a swing. Wide ball flies off as it is, especially the Coca-Cola ones. So they have gone with it. But the Indian way of playing is completely different to the English way of playing. Mm. Though Virat Kohli and Rohit Sharma are opening the batting, which I think in a T20 is great. right? But Indians don't go and play funky shots till they go are well set. Okay, and uh, so it's a completely different way of playing. We believe in our fundamentals in playing, whereas one team believes in fashion in playing. So it's completely different. Darryl, so, yeah, yeah Carol, Raj. we are not going to be told how to bat by someone else. Hmm. Darren, would you say that when England lost one of the ODIs, would you say there was a lot, there was a lot of hype, wasn't there, about that's because of them going always all all out guns blazing, trying to hit as many four sixes and you know in in try and get as early runs as possible. Do you reckon that's where they might have lost this series? Uh, no, I I would I agree with what Raj just said, and I think it's you've got to look at how England have allowed India to score three thirty or three twenty five, three thirty in all three games, mm. and. You can't keep relying on your big, your big hitting batting lineup to get those sort of scores because it's not going to work all the time, no. as you've seen today. And and it does work for England because we have a team of ball strikers rather than batsmen. Apart from uh, Milan's probably better than that. I'm doing him down a bit there, but and as Raj says, the ball has no seam on it. It swings for about ten minutes and that's it. So you can you've just got guys who hit the line hit through the line, stand on leg stump and hit through the line, which is, if we go back to the test series, what causes them a lot of problem in test cricket. Mm. That's why Bairstow and Roy struggle in test cricket. And you saw it with the way Roy got out today. He's played two or three really good shots. He's got his foot across the middle, middle and off stump and driven through the covers. And the one that did swing in, if you watch it again, his foot was on leg stump and he went searching for it with his arms with a good ball, came back through the gap and got the top of off stump. So I wouldn't, England have decided that this is going to be their brand, horrible word, of cricket that they're going to play. But I think, as you saw with both teams, once they're missing two or three of their frontline bowlers, like India, I think, had three or four bowlers missing who would will yeah. come in. And England, once you've... If Wood doesn't play and Archer doesn't play, and I, for the life of me, don't understand why Chris Wokes isn't playing, mm. then their bowling looks a little bit flat when Wood's not bowling and when the spinners aren't on fire. Yeah, right. I think we'll come. We're going to come back to the White Wall series. We're now going to come back to the Test match. Yeah, Raj, carry on. Raj, Raj, quickly. You know this argument that this is how I play. This is how we play. It's okay if you win, hmm. right? Otherwise, that's like a headstrong statement. Or oh, this is how I play. Yeah, okay. In the long run, if you win more than you lose, then I can agree with it. But all that, after you've just lost the third series, it doesn't really look smart. It's like someone going and trying to trade the markets and has just lost 50K on uh, a trade and saying, that's the way I trade and don't manage my risks. It's quite a stupid way of doing things. And it is because, why are they doing it? Because they are trying to play a brand of cricket which is going to get the non cricketer to the ground that's what they are thinking mm -hmm. but is that the way to go now why is it that they are saying and it is evident that the guy who plays all formats is getting lesser and lesser for England and why is that not the case for the subcontinent countries the Sena countries yes but not the subcontinent countries why? Because the subcontinent countries play a same brand of cricket. Subcontinent uh, countries are not struggling 
to get viewers to the ground or on TV. Now, I think they are trying to play a brand of cricket saying, oh, this is attacking, this is exciting and all that. But still, you need to play proper cricket. Mm. And all this has started since what I said. They managed to wiggle the ICC and get that past the two wide balls, the power play extensions, four outside rather than five for quite a period of time. Okay, these are the major issues. Now, I don't think I have ever thought growing up that I'm going to speak in a, a you know, meeting like this where we are going to talk about India's spin bowling not being up to mark and English batsmen not being able to play moving ball. Mm. I don't think I've ever, this would have been applicable at least 10 years ago. It's unheard of. English batsmen can't play moving ball. Mm. Or Indian spinners are not good enough. Same way. Yeah. So This is high time that Indian board really uses his power or its power. This is the time to put their foot down and use the power to get the balance in. In right, right balance is important. Otherwise, this is loaded for the Sena countries. Mm. Because that's what they want. They want only power cricket. It's quite similar to what happened to hockey lots of years ago. India was a champion hockey side on grass. The, move, the moment it went to Astro, it was no longer the side it was because it was physicality. Mm. Now, cricket is not a physical game. So it is time for the, you know, subcontinent boards to really get their uh, side of things and make sure you get the balance right. Otherwise, it's not a root is scoring or a Milan is scoring. You get people who are hacking and getting away. Mm. Your top edge is going for a six. Uh, the England spinners bowled much better than the Indian spinners. Adil Rashid definitely bowled much better than the Indian spinners in the shorter format. And he's going at eight and over and we have to say that is good bowling. Hmm. So the spinners have been tight. So something has to be done by the uh, powers to be to get that balance right for ball and bat. Why is it now that so many different teams are being made for test matches, uh, one day and T20? Mm. You go back to the era of the time when people like Sachin, Saurav, Lara, uh, Dravid, they were playing, they were playing everything. Mm. Why? One white ball. Ball moved early, ball moved late. Spinner came into the game. People were outside. Ball got soft. Not this, I'll just keep swinging and if it connects, it connects. If it doesn't connect, it doesn't connect. Or they need to make sure that they use the Duke ball so that it does something. This is a joke. Right, moving, well, I think we'll leave that aside and we'll, and we'll come back to the White Bull series. Let's come back to, to February, March when the Test series was played. Now, Raj, I'll ask you this again. The big talk was the four pitches we played on. Yes, it was fair. No, it, it was fair because it was fair for both sides. But would you still stick with saying that it it's the same for both sides and also that it's at your home, it's home advantage? Or do you think it was a bit underprepared? No, nothing. It's the same for both sides. When you go to England, you get green seamers. Would you say it was a poor? You it was poor. Hang on, hang on. You might say it was it favored the home team. Mm. Obviously, when you played the World Cup or whatever in England, when you play the shorter format, the ball doesn't do anything. So it is possible to make absolute flat roads in England also. So why do we get green seamers? Mm. But would you because class it? Home advantage. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. So your groundsman who is capable of making a flat deck, just because when he wants to see uh, England go and murder Afghanistan and score 400, mm. right? The same groundsman, when India plays a test match, gives a green top. We don't say anything. That's fine. That's your home advantage. We'll play. Would you class so the pitch? Our... 
Would you class it as poor groundsman? It's it's poor for us. So uh, who has given this idea that Test match wicket has to be like this? If it swings and seems, it's fine. If it turns, it's just a problem. Who has said that? This is a perception, maybe in England and Australia. Doesn't matter what England and Australia think. They are not playing against each other. They can think whatever they want to think. Would you not say it was a poor Test match pitch? No. So no. the green top is also a poor Test match pitch. Just think of it. Your groundsman, who's capable of preparing a flat deck, is preparing a green top. Mm. Our groundsman has showed that he can also prepare a flat deck, like in Pune or whatever. He has prepared a uh, wicket which turns, in which number eight, seven or eight went and got a hundred. Mm, exactly. Fair and square. Damn. Where would you be on this? It, just just before we close this up, I think we'll close this up after this. I think it's been one of the big talking points. Where where whereabouts are you on this topic? Um, pretty much where Raj is. I mean, as I said to you before, and we had a talk about this after test series, England won the toss three out of four times. England had the best of the conditions and still blew it, if you like. And in all those games, were in situations where they were either in the game or or in the running on top of the game. All I would say is that None who've not heard anything from anyone who played any of the England players, none of them have had said anything about it. This has all come from media and and vehicles like that. Mm. So it's um yeah, we do I mean I mean I I, I think the what when you'll find out is when India come over here and they will be green seamers, and I still think I still think there's quite a big gap between the two test sides. I think they're very close as white ball sides, but in test cricket, I still think in any conditions, India are stronger. Mm. And I think that'll be proven when they come over here in the summer. Mm. Raj, I know I spoke to you about this before, but Michael Vaughan came out and, you know, he said that this squad rotation, if it keeps happening, they keep changing these players around. Test match cricket, this is how it will die. Do you, do you think that 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 could make it happen? That could make Test Match Cricket die if they keep changing all the big players, taking them in and out? Yeah, for once I agree with Michael Vaughan what he has said. Mm. And uh, I think they're very confused about this rotation policy. Chris Wokes never played a game the whole winter. He was in the summer the best player. Mm. Moilani came back, went back, didn't play a T20. Then he played now. They just don't know what's happening. No. I think uh, it was Kevin Peterson the other day who said, he said, uh, it is up to the player. If he's saying that I want to play this, 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 then it is the player's call. Mm. And it should be up to the player. If I am 100% certain that I can last through this and I don't need to go home, why am I asked to go home? Mm. No, exactly. Um it's simple. Darren, so obviously England got quite a big summer, got India and, and also New Zealand Test Series. Do you think England, could in, will in, this, their, their performance in the Test Series, do you reckon that will affect them going into the summer? Or will they think, no, because we're making our own pitches, we, it, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't really be as bad as it was in the winter? I don't know. I mean, I'd, I'd like to actually just go back to that previous point. As an England fan, it annoys me massively that this rotation system, which they love, mm. did not happen in either of the white ball series, the 2020 or the 50 over series. They chose not to pick Chris Wokes for the 50 over series, which just defies belief to me. But And Joffrey Archer went through injury. Apart from that, it's the full side all the way through both 2020 and 50 over series. And if I was um, in charge of purse strings at Channel 4, who play, paid a lot of money to get the series, to see England blatantly just not really take it that seriously through their selection I'll be a little bit annoyed and I think the ECB may have missed a trick there they had cricket back on terrestrial telly and last time that was happening was 2005 and there was a and they had a chance to really show something and show this England team to be decent and be able to put up a fight against India in India which is never easy but they didn't because they chose to rotate players and and I don't think like I said, it depends. I don't think England will make that many changes to the test side. Mm. I would if it was me, but I don't think they will. I think they'll stick with quite a lot of the guys they've got. And I saw the interview with Peterson earlier, and 
he said the players should decide, which is fine. I also thought he was a little bit disrespectful to New Zealand with saying, well, they should all they should miss the New Zealand series and all play against India because I think New Zealand are better than that. But um, we'll see when they come over because they're they're a strong side as well. That's why they're playing India in the the Test final. No, exactly. Raj, one of the big debates I, has been for I the understand past. where you are coming from, but yeah. I think he is talking uh, from a complete player's point of view and the champion, he is, he's the last one who wants to play in front of em- empty stands and, uh, you know, in a no-consequence game sort. So he's someone who always wanted to prove himself when the pressure was on. So he is taking that into account of you know, play the India series, play the IPL where the big game matters, where so much of crowds, the pressure is on, the hype is there, the media is there, rather than playing a series in May, which might be rained off three days. So he's uh, going on those lines because New Zealand are playing the Test Championship finals anyway. Yeah. Raj, would you say England will stay with Johnny Bester? For what? Why Te- test, no, test match, test series. Uh, I'm not the selector, but if uh, he was, he had the same performance or anyone had the same performance like him in the Indian side, then there it would be very difficult for him to come back. Mm. Right. I think we're going to put test series to one side. India won, obviously, well, they did definitely win. And they were definitely the better side. Right, coming to the T20 series, Mo and Ali. So there was a lot of, Mo and Ali got sent home, Darren, in the Test series, played one game and was told he was going to play or come back fresh for the White Wall series to play, well, it sounded like to play quite a few games. Do you think this is where England sort of had messed up this rotational policy out to the out to the public because then rest of Monali was giving the sense that they would play him a lot of the white ball games? Yeah, because that's what I heard in the media. Mm. He was being rested because Owen Morgan wanted him fit for the the white both white ball series, and I also think it, England missed a big trick there because they've got a twenty twenty World Cup in India later in the year and they've played twelve players. They've played the same 11. The only time they veered off that was when Wood was unfit and um, Tom Curran came in. Whereas India have shown a lot of their good youngsters, came into the side, produced match-winning performances, and now India's only problem is they've got, and they've once Jadeja's back again and Bumrah's back again, they've got, um, a, they, they've got a squad of about 15, which they've got to find 11 players from. Whereas England, I don't think, learned anything in the 2020 series that they didn't already know. I- I think for India on the spin front, obviously Bumrah is going to come back as the seamer. On the spin front, unless someone does something extraordinarily well in the IPL, there is a strong chance that they will go to Ashwin again because this spin is not going to work. Mm. Right. Krunal Pandya's spin or Kuldeep Yadav's spin now is going to go. Right. So yeah. this is not going to work. So they need someone who's a quality bowler, who can, you know, uh, get a bit of control in those four overs. They badly need that. Yeah, especially because the guys who have been successful are the, the mystery bowlers who spin it both ways, which he does, isn't he? Sunny on the Rhines, Rashid Khans, etc. Mm. The guys who can spin it either way, which he does. So. Another point was that... Ashwin. Yeah, Ashwin, yeah. There might be someone else being thrown up during the IPL. You never know. There was a guy uh, called Varun Chakravarti. He made, he failed the fitness test. That's why he didn't play. But um, there might be someone being thrown up during the IPL. But just like Axar Patel, right? Thing, no, Axar Patel uh, is going to be um, in the T20. I don't think on a good wicket, Axar Patel will be very effective. Aksar Patel will be effective in the longer format, uh, not on roads mm. with Kokabura Bowl, which doesn't do anything and it just yeah. goes flies off the bat. And the other thing which I just, you know, when I hear commentary, it just, uh, there was some, uh, when Natrajan bowled that over, and one commentator was going, oh, he's under so much pressure, he's under so much pressure. 
Mate, look at where he has come from. This is not a guy who gets dropped off at the indoor center in the back of the Range Rover. He's not that. He's come from the most humble belongings. Everything he does now is a bonus for him. So without understanding people, without understanding people's backgrounds, this stuff that is said is got no meaning. Yes, it is pressure for someone who's coming out from a monocultural environment. This guy's mum used to sell, uh, you know, uh, small flower garlands in front of temples. From there, he's playing for India. Mm, exactly. He, he has gone through the worst pressure that is possible. This is bonus for him. Mm. Um, Darren, coming on just one last bit about the T20 series. Again, one of the big talking points was Ben Stokes batting pretty far down the order. Now, people are saying that he didn't have the best tour, but then when he's batting so far down the order, well, you can't really expect to have much from him, to be honest. No, it's a go back to what I said earlier. England England have probably got more problems now than before the series because they don't know what to do with Stokes. I've had certain people, I've heard certain people say, bat him in the top three, and that means you'll have to lose... David Milan, who's the number one ranked T20 player on the planet at the moment, which is just ridiculous. It's bonkers. It's and I mean, and as I said, yes, yes, you've. I if it was me, I'd find somewhere for Stokes in T20 in the top four, mm. probably at four, because he does need. He's a bit similar to Chris Gale, not in not probably not quite as good, but he does need 10, 12 balls to get going. He can't just go in when, like, I think, I'm not sure what it was, one of the games he went in with four overs to go, needing to go at 18 and over from word go. And with the best will in the world, no one's going to do that. Mm. So, yeah, I do think England, I don't think the playing staff will change that much between now and the World Cup, but I think they've got to jiggle around with their batting order. I think Morgan's probably got to come to, who had a shocker of a T20 series, has got to come in at about six five or six and he's got to be your the word they use is finisher now isn't it i think he's got to do that role and it looks like that um or maybe but i mean it's difficult i mean ha having seen what they've done to the white winner 50 over series you sort of find it hard to argue against roy and bearstow opening but england choose to go with butler i think so yeah they've got a few decisions to make in the next few months with that side yeah so. right got anything to say on that no, I just feel really sorry for Milan. Mm. I think they are obsessed with this funky type of batting. They're mm. just obsessed. You can't really drop a number one batsman in the world. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. Mm. No. Um, coming on back, we're going to come back to the one day internationals now. Um, do you think that, Darren, when seeing you know, the players being rotated, we sort of spoke about Mern Ali, but do you reckon that did have quite a big impact? Because they didn't, they brought, they brought Parkinson over because of Adil Rashid. He has, he has a problem with his, his, his shoulder quite often. Why didn't they give him a go? Because if, 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 if Rashid has a problem in the T20 World Cup, he hasn't had, he, ha he hasn't had any time in India with England to, you know, play any cricket. I'd like to be able to give you a clever answer to that, but I've no idea. I mean, I've, I've heard Rob Key say on the in the last three or four days, this is a series which matters the least out of the three of them because there's no 50 over World Cup to for for ages. Mm. But I can't believe any series in India doesn't matter. That's just yeah. rubbish. But if it doesn't matter that much, then give everyone a go. Mm. I mean, what I mean, Sam Curran today, great, but you everything you know about him, you already know. Tom Curran, you already know everything about him, and. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, it, it's it's arguable whether England have this thing about left arm bowlers. So mm. they they had two of them there today. They bowled very well the other day, but they bowled pretty ordinary today for the first fifteen overs. But um, no, I I I'm not sure. I mean, yeah, I I would have given Parkinson a go at some point. I mean, the problem they've got in these pitches, the ball didn't turn that much. Whether it would have turned more because England's thing is to win the toss and bowl first. Whether it turns more in the daytime before the dew comes down, it probably does, which uh, Mo and Ali's ball to Virat Kohli did today. Um, but yeah, I'd have given Parkinson a shout at some point, yeah. Raj? Could be that, 
could be that they were trying to protect Parkinson from bowling in India, especially after the stuff he has tweeted and all the insulting stuff he wrote about Dhoni, Kohli, uh, Indian first-class cricket and all that sort of stuff. I'd, I'd like to think not, because if they would have known about that before he went out there, and if you're going to slag off legends of Indian cricket, if you're going to play in India, it's probably play, best to play when there's nobody in the crowd. Well, exactly. I can understand. I can understand that if there's eighty thousand, hundred thousand people at him, but if there's nobody in the ground, I wouldn't have thought that would make any difference. They're playing at Amenabad, and you know Parkinson, Rashid's injured. Parkinson comes in; he's going to be getting a lot. So why don't they just give him a go? I, I think it's ludicrous, Raj. You, 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 do you agree? No, I do. I cannot see their thought process. Mm might be in 10 years from now they'll be looking to go and watch Chicago Bulls to figure out who's going to be the next <laughs> batsman at number 5 they might go anything they might do anything mm. right we've got a few questions that were that were sent to us about the indie game so I'll go one by one Darren who would you rather have as a finisher Butler or Pant Pant Raj Pant Pant? That, well, that was easy, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right. I think I think I think Pant's going to be a superstar for a long, long time in all forms of the game. Mm. So that's my opinion. So. Um, Raj, how can the English touring batsmen prepare for for tours like India? How can they go in knowing it's going to spin, knowing the pitches are going to be spinning? How can they go in to make sure their their defence is secure enough? They will never be able to do that just by going before the tour. They need to go and play club cricket there or go for about a month there and go to an academy and be part of it. They have to experience the entire way, the mindset to be with the local boys, to understand. Then only they're going to be able to hack this. Otherwise, it is two weeks before a tour and going there, it is going to be pretty difficult they need to spend time there play club cricket there or go and you know play spend a month and a half and bat daily against um you know six seven quality bowlers morning evening mm. that's how you understand it you have to understand apart from playing you have to understand the outside thought process mm. okay what is that guy thinking? Because when you play spin, it's almost like playing chess. So to outwit your opposition, you have to know that person's mental condition also. What is he thinking? He's not thinking like you. Natarajan and Reese Topley are not thinking the same way. There is no way. Okay, different backgrounds. Mm. Similarly, Virat Kohli and um, take someone, Joe Root, are not thinking the same way. Their thinking is completely different. Just like Ravi Shastri's and Chris Silverwood's thinking is completely different. Mm. So till you know that person, it's very difficult to go and outwit the person. Yeah. And I, I think that goes for our spin bowlers as well. well no, exactly. should go, should, is that a new, is that if I jumped onto your next question? That was, that was the next question. So, Darren, how do spinners come more, how, how could the England spinners come more threatening in India? Go and go, yeah, go over to India and play against bowl against better players of spin. And, go and, and play club cricket, as Rice said. Yeah. And more than that, before they go to India, the spinners, they need to bowl. They mm. need to bowl. And bowling means at least if you're a spinner, you have to bowl, say, four days a week in the off-season, you have to bowl 300 balls. Mm -hmm. Go to ask any good spinner from yesteryears. We've got someone like um, in uh, Sussex here. Go and ask Chris Waller. He was a good spinner, very nice action. Go and ask people like Phil Tufnell, who was a decent spinner. What did they do? They bowled. Hmm. They didn't sit down and listen to PowerPoint presentations. 
as a batsman you need to bat as a bowler you need to bowl mm. as a fielder you need to catch balls throw balls that is a basic of cricket mm. by l- listening to people you're not going to become a better driver yeah you're going to become a better driver only when you drive that's why people say when people are allowed to fly that you need x number of flying hours that's the reason mm. yeah okay otherwise someone would have read a book listened to 20 powerpoint presentations and would be flying your london dubai flight mm. <laughs> right uh, the last question is so we had we had yours theo's and darren's view on on the the test the on this test series um to guess what the score would be which you all got it right in the way that india won the game but now i'm going to ask you who's going to win england versus india in england five match series in england darren um i'm going to go it's five matches is it well um, it'll, it'll rain it'll rain for one of them when it so um <laughs> I, I'm going to I'm going to stick with what happened in India. I'm going to go. I think England win one, but I think India will win the series three one. Right, Raj. Depending on the wickets, I think if it is, um, because ECB will be very worried about um, going green tops. Because if they go oh, green tops and with um, lack of revenue through COVID and all that, uh, and the match start um, getting finished in two days, three days. and they will have a lot of catch up to do so i think that way they will have to prepare quite flat wickets to last five, five days if it lasts for eight days then i would say india would have a better chance but if it's on green seamers it will be england will start as favorites so what's the final score raj what are you saying five match series darren said 3-1 what are you saying depends on the wickets again if it's a, a, a if it's a flat one then uh, i go th- um, 3 2 to india yeah. if it's a green top it could be a 4 one england something like that could happen well we can review this in august or september when which is a long time away but we'll keep these down and we will then go over and we'll get theories as well we'll get we'll try and get and then we'll go through that when the time comes i think we might finish that there so thank you raj thank you darren for what has been a really good podcast on the tour of india and also thank you to theo for joining us for the first two match previews um the last thing i want to quickly say please may follow us on all of our platforms on social media and also subscribe to our youtube channel which is just one click below this video The last thing I want to say is England span over to India in February. Well, England fans might want India hopefully to swing over to England in August. Thanks for listening.